This episode of Brains on Games is a preview of a tableau building game about breeding baby dinosaurs. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald and this episode we are going to talk about a, a tableau building game that's all about baby dinosaurs. It's a tiny box game from a company called Microgamo that was sent to me last week, a game called Dinosauria. Dinosauria is a game, well, the base game is just a solo player only game, but there are some extra cards in the expansion that allow you to play with up to three players. It's a game for kids aged 10 and up, and you can play a game in between 20 minutes and an hour. Let's take a look at Dinosauria. Microgamo is a company that prides itself on its kind of minimalistic approach. You saw how tiny this box is, and it's tiny because rather than including a bunch of counters and dice in the game, you're going to use your own dice. You need three six-sided dice for this game. You can pull them out of other games. I happen to have a, a box of six-sided dice just for this kind of purpose. And in the rule book, you'll see that they use coins as counters. Uh, and it is possible that I might have more games than money because I, I happen to have more counters than I do coins. And so I pulled some pieces from Caverna, which is up on the shelf here behind me. So I've got a bunch of these round colored counters and uh, I'm using three of the these little houses from Caverna as well as the action counters. The first thing that might jump out at you when you take a look at this game, Dinosauria, is that the cards are awesome. The artwork is fantastic. And you've got uh, not just a picture of the dinosaur, but some facts about the dinosaur, when it lived and how much it weighed and whether it was a, a, a predator, uh, a, an herbivore or a carnivore. So you've got some information, the scientific name of the dinosaur, how to pronounce it, uh, a few little facts, and then there are some numbers here at the top. And, and these numbers, you can see them on all of the cards. These numbers are the resource cost that you'll need to spend in order to bring this dinosaur into your tableau. You can't see them on any of the cards that are on the table here. And I'm going to hold the Stegosaurus up to the smaller camera here. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. Uh, but on the back of each card is... A baby version of that dinosaur because that is how you're going to end the game. The end game is triggered when your nine card tableau, so you're working with three rows and three columns of these cards, once you've got nine babies in that wild space in your tableau, that's going to be the end of the game and then you start to count up points. Here I've set up the marketplace so there are always going to be three dinosaurs for you to choose from on your turn if you have the resources to bring them into your tableau. And this is the resource tracker right here. Each player is going to have one of these that uh, with different color areas on it and they're numbered from one to six. That's very important. We'll talk about what these things mean. But these colors represent the vita that you're going to be spending to bring these dinosaurs from the, this marketplace into your tableau. So for example, if you want this Myosaurus down here at the bottom, you need one purple, two blue, and three orange. Now there is a, what's called the golden rule of this game, and that is that you can trade two Vita of any color to represent one of another color. So you don't always need to have exactly those colors on your little counter here in order for you to bring that dinosaur into the tableau. Before you start the game, you're going to roll these three dice once and that's going to give you a bonus condition that will earn you some extra points at the end of the game. In this case, I've rolled two fives and a six and I've placed these counters here to the right hand side of the numbers on my trackers. The next thing that you're going to do before you start is roll these dice, well, roll the three dice twice. So you're going to roll six D6 in order to determine how many Vita of each color you're going to start the game with. One other thing that you have to do before you begin your first turn is you get to reserve 
one of these dinosaurs from the marketplace so that it's it's sort of waiting for you to place it in your tableau. It doesn't disappear, and I'll tell you why that is. Now, there are a few things you might want to consider when you're choosing one of these. First, we've got some dinosaurs here, a couple of them that, that are worth a lot of points at the end of the game. The uh, Myasaura here is worth four prestige points, they're called, which are just victory points. So at the end of the game, once a player has nine of those baby dinosaurs, each, uh, each space in their tableau is filled with the baby dinosaur, the game ends, and you're counting up how many prestige points you have, and you're going to compare between the players uh, to determine who wins. So the prestige points are, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but the prestige points are right here in the top right of the card. Uh, and so a Stegosaurus only has one, but this Myasaurus down here would give you four. You might think about that. The other thing you might want to think about are these bonus points. So these three counters over here represent a, a large number, well, 15 total points that you might be able to earn at the end of the game. You get four points if you have one of these colors in the first column. If you're able to do two columns, you're going to get another five points on top of that. Three columns, you get six points. So, so four, five, six points, that's a total of 15 points. If you've got uh, a red, uh, a purple, and another red along the way in those columns in your tableau. I might decide then that I want to reserve this one because what you're looking at is the color down here on the bottom stripe for these bonus points. So this is worth two, but there's only one red one on the board. And so maybe I'll reserve this fellow and then I'll start the turn with these dinosaurs available in the marketplace. Now you've got three actions that you can do. Uh, I've used these little houses, but you're going to have three coins in front of you, probably. Uh, what can you do? Well, if you've already placed this dinosaur, one available option is to reserve another dinosaur. So if the reserve space uh, on your tableau is empty, you can add uh, a dinosaur to that reserve space by spending an action. One thing that's going to happen probably very often, especially at the beginning of the game, is that you can use one of your actions to gain some more of this Vita that you're using in order to bring these dinosaurs into your tableau. You could roll three of these dice, just like I did at the beginning of the game to set things up, and the numbers on the dice are going to determine which Vita you're going to get. You can also move a dinosaur from the catalog here, the marketplace, or from your reserve space into your tableau. I don't really have enough resources to do that just yet as my first action, but that, that's something I'm, I'm going to want to consider down the road. You may want to lay some eggs because you need eggs to get those baby dinosaurs. I'll show you how that's done. Uh, and then finally, if you've got some dinosaurs in your tableau, you can rotate them and get the Vita that way instead of just having it pop up randomly. My first action on my turn, I cannot afford any of these dinosaurs. I don't have enough Vita. Well, I'm going to roll those three dice in order to get some more. I rolled a one, a three, and a five. So that's going to be a yellow, a blue, and a red Vita. And I happen to have all the colors. I've only got sort of a natural color one to represent the orange. Now I have some options in terms of which dinosaurs I bring into my tableau. So uh, for my second action, I am going to spend some Vita. I want to bring this dinosaur up here uh, as the first one in my tableau. That's going to cost me two red and three purple. Now I've got the three purple. I only have one red. However, I can spend two of any other color in order to uh, replace one of these that I don't have. Now what I've done, you've, you, you can see that I just pulled all of those counters over to the right of the card. And that's so that if I change my mind, I know where everything was, uh, and then I can put everything back if necessary. But I'm not going to change my mind, so th all of these are just going to go back into the supply. Now I have one more action, and I think what I'm going to do as my final action is now I've got an empty reserve space, I'm going to move that Myasaura over here because it's worth a lot of points and I don't want my opponent to get it. The next thing that's going to happen is the remaining card slides down to the bottom and I have to discard one. So we'll get rid of that one and now we'll have two other dinosaurs pop up. 
and the catalog or the marketplace. We've got another big point dinosaur here. The Brachiosaurus is worth four points and the next player is going to have a chance to reserve that or to maybe get enough Vita in order to be able to afford it. And it goes back and forth. It is really a race for you to fill up those nine spaces in your tableau. It's tricky though because you have to complete the first column before you can move on to the next one. And completing a column means not only do you have three dinosaurs here, but they have to all be baby dinosaurs. Now, how do you get those baby dinosaurs? Well, you've, you see that there are, at the bottom of the card, there are some eggs of different colors. So in order for me to get a baby version of this little dinosaur, for me to flip the card over, I need to place some Vita on here in those colors. On my next turn then, in that case, I might spend my first action, which I've already done, to get some more Vita, and I rolled those dice. I might next lay those eggs, and what I would do is take the, I need a purple, I need a green and a blue. So I'll move those over here and I'll think about it. Is that what I wanna do as my second action? I think I will. You put those tokens right there on the card and as soon as those spaces are filled up, you can flip that card over and what do you get? Look at that little baby. Eventually your tableau is going to start to fill up. So I've got two columns of babies and I've started the third. I need one more dinosaur in here and then I need to flip these three over to the baby side. But as your tableau fills up, you do get to do that more powerful action. Remember, you can earn Vita from rolling those three dice, but that's completely random and you only get three. You can also rotate some dinosaurs in order to earn that Vita. So if you've got a dinosaur that doesn't have any eggs on it, it can be rotated to earn some Vita. So maybe I want to do this. So I'm going to rotate this one that's going to give me one purple. The babies give me two, so it becomes a very powerful action. So, so I'll do one from each column, and then I want a red. So this is going to give me one purple, two yellow, and two red. So five Vita instead of the three random Vita I would have gotten from just rolling the dice. I'm gonna put that on the board and I'll show you what you can do next. So there was my first action. You can, you can rotate an unrotated dinosaur, one from each column. So I can't do anything with these ones now. I can't put eggs on this one. Uh, I could only rotate it because there were no eggs on it, but this guy could still use some eggs and I've got just the right colors now to do it because I earned that Vita as my first action. For my second action, I'm going to spend that to get those three eggs. I need a purple, a red, and a yellow, and I have all of those. I don't have to cheat and trade in two for one. So there's the red, there's the yellow. They're a bit larger than the card. Now I've got all three of those. This guy's gonna flip over, and now I have another baby. So I've got now seven out of nine. I'm almost done. The skills that you're exercising here are probably pretty obvious. I mean, first of all, there's knowledge about these dinosaurs. You've got the dinosaur facts on here. You've got Pachycephalosaurus. And what's nice for, uh, maybe the kids know how to pronounce these dinosaur names, but you've got a little pronunciation guide on the baby side so the parents can be in the know about how these, these dinosaurs are supposed to be uh, pronounced. Uh, it tells you when they lived, how big they were, what they ate. Uh, and, and so you get those dinosaurs, and who doesn't like facts about dinosaurs, especially when you have these beautiful cards that you're looking at. The artwork's fantastic on these. So, so some factual knowledge, uh, of course, is something that you can develop here by reading these cards. But you're also budgeting those resources. You're budgeting the Vita, you're budgeting the actions, and you're trying to tackle things so that you can earn those bonus points, which are super important in this game. Those up to 15 points that you can get if you have the right dinosaurs in each column. And if you've watched any other episode of this show, almost any other episode, then you know that if you're planning ahead, if you're trying to budget actions or budget resources, if you're tackling things in an organized way, you're exercising the executive functioning skills. Super important skills to develop, I think, for kids. And uh, this is a, a simple game that does exercise those abilities. And that, in a nutshell, is 
Dinosauria. It's going to be coming up very soon for crowdfunding. I'll put a link to the campaign uh, in the show notes of this episode. Thanks to the folks at Microgamo for sending this along. And if you have any questions or comments about Dinosauria or any of the other games that we've talked about on the show, you can leave them in the comment section below this video, or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. Brainsongames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go, and the previous ones are up there already. Brains on Games is the Twitter handle and the Facebook page and the Instagram feed, so we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me, and hopefully I'll see you next time.